name is uh, Sean Lenton and I'm the Creative Director on Operation Flashpoint Red River. So it's set in the, the near future, 2013, and essentially what you've got is a, a situation where the US Marines have kind of pushed or eliminated all the insurgents in Afghanistan, and the last few have moved or been squeezed into this other country, Tajikistan, which is where the game's based. Three big things that we really wanted to push were uh, accessibility, visuals, and handling. But we're trying to give people better tools to play the game this time around, and trying to sort of hit that difficulty curve and get a sort of a much quicker time for people to actually get in the game. Um, visuals, again, we've gone for um, a much stronger look to the game. We're actually using the same tech that uh, our racing games use for lighting and post-processing and so on. As well as that, we've really pushed the, um, the looks of the characters as well, the four classes, a very distinct sort of silhouette and very distinct look to them. I think no matter what you do, you know, certainly first person shooters, you've got to have a solid engine, you've got to have a solid behind the gun experience. So we spent a tremendous amount of time honing that, that feeling of actually being behind the gun, giving every gun its own handling parameters and making them feel very different when you pick them up. Uh, in Dragon Rising it was a little flat and unengaging and uh, we found that people didn't really get attached to their fighting members and they just send them off to kind of like, you know, go see if there's any bad guys down that road kind of stuff, you know. So uh, yeah, so this time around we've got a guy called Sergeant Knox who's your squad leader. And he's very much the guy that's kind of shepherding you through the game, he's keeping you going, he's telling you when you've achieved your objectives, telling you that you need to go back and do this or that you haven't done that. And um, he's, there's, there's some great lines in there, a lot of swearing, um, but some really good gags and jokes and stuff like that as well. Again, it's a game, you know, it's trying to bring a smile to people's faces. You know, we're not really inspired by sort of huge nuclear explosions and jumping over cliffs in jet skis and stuff like that. For us, it's much more, I mean, in real life, the things that is terrifying for soldiers is crossing the street under fire. That, that in itself is, and, and that's what we try to make an experience, you know. You see the bullets whizzing over and you just got to get over there. And that in itself is, is kind of, that's a hero's job just to cross the road, basically. And it's that kind of twist that we've got on it, really. It's much more kind of a, a documentary-style feel to the game rather than a, than a Hollywood feel. The campaign itself is, is you know, there's no evil arch villain at a castle at the end that you've got to kill yeah. it's just it's just military maneuvers basically yeah uh, last stand is a kind of a horde mode style kind of firefight style thing where you basically have to defend an area uh, we have uh, rolling thunder which is a convoy escort mode where basically you have to get a convoy from a to b looking out for ieds ambushes and so on uh, we have uh, combat search and rescue uh, the premise being pilots down behind enemy lines you've got to go in there rescue them and bring them back out and then finally we have Combat Sweep, which is essentially kind of counterinsurgency operations, just moving through a village, uh, destroying any insurgents or, or ammo caches that you find in there. But the, the, the point of these is that they're quick fixes, you know, you just jump in, you're in and out about half an hour basically. Dragon Rising was a game that was mainly for the hardcore players. Um, is this game more accessible for like the um, more uh, like less experienced players? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to make a product that's that's you know that only a handful of people can play and enjoy. You know, in the business of making games, it's about fun um, and it's about making something that you know everyone can join into. For me, the real big success of Dragon Rising was the uh, number of console players that, that got turned on to it. You know. Because um, obviously the game itself has a heritage of a PC product uh, and a hardcore and so on and so on. Um, and I think you know you could still retain some of the core elements of that game without it being that unforgiving basically. So as I said before, it's still the same game underneath there, but what we try to do is try to give them, get the, the gamers more tools to do that job and, and, uh, and really just not make it so, um, so intimidating, I guess is, is the word that, that I'd use, you know, and it's, uh, I think... Um, I think people want something different. I think people are yearning for something that's a little bit more mature, a little bit more thoughtful. Um, I'm kind of sensing a little bit of kind of fatigue, genre fatigue, with some of the, the big titles that are out there. People are just kind of buying them and kind of going through the numbers, you know, but they're not really engaged as such, you know. So I'm hoping what we've got is something different. Uh, we could offer something different that they can come to and they can try, and you know, hopefully they'll love it.